it was when I met uh, Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche that I really connected to the Buddhist path. Particularly, he was a genius in being able to present very esoteric and um, traditional uh, Buddhist teachings to the Western world for the Western mind. These teachings of the five wisdom energies, which are also called in um, many Buddhists, in, our, in the Vajrayana Buddhist tradition, they're also called the, uh, the teachings on the Buddha families. And um, he devised a way of working with these energies, uh, these wisdoms, uh, that was ex- um, made them accessible to anyone, not just someone who was um, training in Buddhism. He gave them to the, the public. We've de- devised a training that in the first year will um, work very much on bringing people into contemplative awareness disciplines where they're working on themselves with sitting meditation and with the five postures and other exercises where people really have a sense of who they are and where their weaknesses are, which I don't like to call so much their weaknesses as their work points, where they need to sort of focus on how to bring those aspects of themselves into the wisdom, aligning with the wisdom and of course where people shine, so they have a good sense of that. Um, In the second year, we're going to be working uh, very specifically on applications in the workplace. In other words, how do you bring that wisdom into your life, maybe your family life, your relationship life, as well as what kind of work you do. And I, though I um, say that this work is Um, for people in the service of others, people who are working for others. It's really for anybody, anybody who wants to do it, artists or football players or (laughs) whoever wants to know more about themselves and how to be in the world. So you take these postures and you uh, do it in a colored environment, either with a room or with glasses. Um, And they evoke or they bring out the energies, the five wisdom energies. And most people's experience in the beginning is actually a lot of the neurosis comes out. But from a Vajrayana point of view, this is really good because it's your good energy that has been um, distorted by our attitudes towards it. And it's really important to understand that the essence is experienced. It's not a conceptual thing. It's something that we uh, have to have direct experience of to understand. So uh, the Buddha, the first one is called Buddha, and it's a white energy. Uh, Its color is white, and its essence is spaciousness all accommodating space so that whatever happens in that space is okay. It it is very uh, welcoming in that sense. And um, the, the flip side of that or the neurotic or the confused side of that is that it uh, is so it, the space becomes too much So it actually closes down and closes off from open space. So um, just to interject here, there's always two aspects to these energies, and they're not. It's not a matter of there's two different thing things. There are more. There's one uh, quality of energy, and it can either be experienced in a open way, or with an open attitude, a receptive, uh, open awareness, or there can be fighting it, resisting that energy. So the second one is uh, traditionally called Vajra, and its um, color is blue. And this Vajra energy has a tremendous amount of clarity and precision. It's best uh, understood through the image of a mirror 
because it reflects the world like a clear mirror. This is the way things are. So in its wisdom, this energy can be extremely pacifying. It, it has the sense of just look at it this way. It doesn't get very emotionally involved in its wisdom. So this energy in its neurosis is full of should. I must do this. No, I must do that. And furthermore, it imposes it on other people. You should do this. To a tremendous sense of being critical, uh, judgmental, and um, opinionated. I know what's right. The intensity of the anger, the aggression, is such that you are not clear if you're the oppressor or the victim. There's a feeling that you're always in some kind of oppressed or victimized situation. When I was writing the book, um, The Five Wisdom Energies, and the subtitles is A Buddhist Way of Understanding Personality, Emotions, and Relationships, I devoted a whole chapter right in the beginning of the book to talk about how we work with the word energy. You could even say God is an energy. People experience something energetic when they even say the word God. In the Buddhist tradition, those energies have been um, uh, talked about in terms of deities, that there are different deities that evoke certain energies. From this understanding of Buddhism, this uh, Vajrayana Buddhism, energy is very present. There are concrete things, which is one level of seeing, understanding reality, but there's also the energetic radiation of everything in our world. And uh, it's that place that, that these five wisdoms come into being and are, are experienced. Uh, when I say it's a two-year training, it, uh, it means that we meet four sessions um, a year with me, and then there are ongoing what we call reflection circles, where there's a, a peer-level discussion of material being presented, as well as coaching, uh, which uh, as a psychotherapist I, uh, I used to call it therapy, but this is not so much concerned with therapeutic process. It's more concerned with how to be in the world and how to affect the world in a positive way.